Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name's John Clark. I'm going to be hosting another one of our uh, brief discussions. Uh, we, we talked about a new reality, and uh, joining me here, uh, Jeff Peters from uh, Esri, uh, no, ESRI, Esri. Thank you. It's fine. Um, you know, has been working uh, along with uh, Jason Berenger uh, on a number of uh, initiatives around uh, retail, retail site selection and the new <coughs> reality that's really presented as we bring location data to decide on when to, where to open, and perhaps even when, uh, the next retail locations. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. So listen, um, I've been around retail and real estate solutions for a while now. Uh, a lot's changed. Um, the dynamics of consumers have, have really become much more measurable. Um, but first of all, let's sort of explain the impact and the challenges that this represents in terms of uh, what retail customers are facing today and perhaps how location data is changing in terms of the needs to satisfy these, uh, these challenges. Yeah. If you want to help us understand that a bit. Yeah, I, I, think, the, I, I think I would approach it from, from two ways. First, uh, what, if we would have been having a conversation 20 years ago, we wouldn't have been talking a lot about how do I source data? How do I, how do I get access to data? Nowadays, or, or today, the conversation is really focused primarily around the volumes of data and, and how do I ingest that data? How do I manage it? How do I analyze it? How do I visualize it? In, in almost a real-time environment. That's that's the, 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 the critical piece. So, you know, we sometimes refer to that as the Vs, you know, we, we've been talking about that for a long time of the context of big data or big data analytics, the volume, the velocity, and the variety of that data. So, so what's happening is, is that uh, as the systems have gotten better, the technology's gotten better, the, the questions are becoming much more sophisticated. You know, we, we talk about things that it's not just about traffic counts or where's the traffic coming from, it's the, where is the traffic now? What's the traffic going to be next week? How am I going to make business decisions based upon this data as well as the data that, the internal data that they're collecting and how do I take the technology like GIS and Esri and all of the, the, the great information and the data and the analytics from here and combine that in a real time fashion to make a much better business decision. So that's what we're seeing. It's the, it's the volume of the data, the, the speed, and, and how do I make decisions now, but also how do I start to do, you know, think about it from a predictive, uh, predictive analytics perspective. Absolutely agree. I mean, the, the, the sort of complexity of data. Yes. Um, you know, there's the, you know, so perhaps the, the three V's and the C, you know, there the complexity is. of bringing all this and perhaps normalizing it. You know, we have information that's coming from multiple different sources. But it's got to exist at a, at a point in time, what does it look like, mm. and at a particular point you know, on a map there. So, yes. so, Jason, talk to me a little bit about how location intelligence helps to solve some of these problems. You know, uh, yeah. as we see this variety uh, of real-time data you know, coming together. Yeah, I mean, when, for, first of all, you know, when you're looking to service a particular market, um, you, you've got to really understand the local needs of that market. You need to understand customer patterns, customer behaviors, et cetera. And so, you know, back to your topic of, of determining where to open your next physical location, be that a store or a distribution center or, or some kind of other fulfillment center, um, that, that equation's become a lot more complex, to, to your point. Um, you, you, no longer can you just kind of look at a profile of a successful location and say, I'm just going to copy that, right? I'm, I'm going to mirror that. Um, customers are mobile. Um, and so previously, we may have all been, when we talk about personalizing something for consumers, it's, it's about, you know, it used to be just about the what, right? And, and now we've, we've got, we, we added the when, right? And now we've got the where. Um, it's important to know where they live, it's, but it's important to know where they work, where they play, the routes they take to get there. Um, and if you take all that into account, it's one way that our retailers are, are able to to, to kind of win that right for that, that interaction, that one-on-one -on -one interaction with customers. Because, you know, as, as, they, as they shift their purchasing to, to online, we've lost a lot of the ability and, and it's really changed the way we have to engage with these customers. Um, and so taking into account some of those criteria are, are really important um, to, to, to connect with those customers in, in a new way. Um, and you know, when you're talking about that physical location now, we need to take all of that kind of data into account 
when we say not only where do I want to put it, but what role is that going to play in my fulfillment strategy uh, for, for, for those consumers? Is it going to be a kind of a, a showroom where I just show off my, my product suite? Um, is it going to be a, a, a fulfillment center? Is it going to be a distribution center, et cetera? And, and those kinds of decisions then start to have an impact on things like inventory, right? And, and how much inventory do I need in that particular location? Um, it has an impact on not only how long does it take customers to get to that physical location, but how quickly can I get out to those customers, right? Um, they're, they're expecting if they place an order to, to have that nearly instantaneously now. So, yeah. um, you know, combination of all those things um, are really back to your complexity <laughs> point. Um, integrating location intelligence data into that is, uh, is critical. Yeah. yeah, you know, you, you raised some, some good points on it. You know, let's explore those in a second around that distribution. Uh, before we do, I want to sort of, something that you were saying there, mm. talked about 20 years ago. Would it be fair to say that, you know, as I think back, you know, a lot of what happened in the retail site selection uh, world centered around the location. What are the characteristics of the location? Yes. What are the demographics? What is the, what are contractual, you know, um, opportunities within the, you know, signage rights and visibility and things like that, yes. physical characteristics. Yeah. Is it fair to say now that that shifted to one where it's more about the behaviors of people in motion that then drives to the opportunity for where to place locations? You know what I'm saying? It's sort of yeah. less about the location. The location becomes the after the fact because somebody may be, to your point, on a route from, you know, they work down in the city, they live up in Summerlin, that's a fairly long distance, but all the way along are points of engagement that yeah. we can take advantage of. Yeah, it, for, for, me, for me what comes to mind is it, it, it comes back to this sort of almost first principles, uh, the value of geography, the value of space and time. If you just think about in many ways, we're in the XYZT business, your location and time. And what's happening is, is that we're condensing those things. We're getting, we're, we're measuring everything. We're starting to measure almost everything. We're measuring everything almost real time. So when you start to sort of formulate that and you start to think about how not only the, the, the technology has changed, but really the, the expectation of the business and the expectation of the customer. They want it on a mobile device. They want it real time. They want to be able to have access to that uh, information, but not just what's happening now, but also in a predictive perspective. And mm -hmm. frankly, what happens is, is that markets and, 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 and people, we get conditioned to things. It's not just good enough for me to know you know, as a, a simple example, it's just not good enough for me what the traffic was yesterday. I want to know what the traffic is now, and I want to know what the traffic's going to be like tomorrow, because I'm making, I'm making real-time decisions to be able to do that. So what's happening is, is there's that almost the, that consumerization of IT, where they're taking that almost uh, real-time, game-like, intuitive way of interacting with technology and that's frankly what their expectation is now of their business systems. So so when I when I think about about the question, one, they want to be able to do they want to have information about that location, but they also want to be able to do in, in a GIS term we sort of call it the layer cake. They want to bring in other layers of information. They want to bring in historical information, they want to bring in current information, they even want to bring in predictive analytics. You pull all that together and they want to literally just want to drill down through that information to be able to, and to answer those much, much more sophisticated questions. And then what happens is, is that this is where the magic happens in this geo-enrichment context where either they've got their, the, the current information that they're using, they're bringing in other sources of information, they want to be able to bring that together and do literally this sort of geo-enrichment scenario where they can ask much more sophisticated questions. And again, they, you know, we're sort of beating on this drum, they want that information now, they want it to be authoritative, and they, you know, they want to make business decisions against it. I absolutely agree. Um, yeah. Coming back to what, one of the points that Jason, um, man, I'd love to get your, your input on this too, Jeff. If we think about you know, beyond the retail location, whether it's a showroom, whether it's a retail store, et cetera, uh, let's, let's understand a little bit about the other side of retail, you know, the online experience mm. and the expectations 
that are set. So yeah. it's not just about placement of the, um, of the retail locations, it's about placement of distribution centers, it's about planning routes, around getting you know, multi, uh, you know, multi-point deliveries, waypoint deliveries, pickups, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Adds a lot of complexity to a retail environment. Jason, yeah. you know, perhaps, uh, you know, what have you seen in, in this regard? Yeah, it, it does. I mean, this solving this last mile piece is one of the most expensive things to do. It's one of the most mm -hmm. complex things to do. And so every, every retailer, every consumer package good company that, that is going direct to consumer now um, is having to figure out new ways to solve for this, right? And it means, uh, again, back to what, how am I using those physical locations that I have? Because most of them have a great network of physical locations right now that they can leverage, right, in some way. Um, and so they're really trying to figure out how can I make the most of that? And that's one way that they can start to compete with some of these digitally native uh, companies that are that are coming on board, which right. which by the way, are starting to open you know physical stores as, uh, as well as, right. as we know. So, um, you know, being able to uh, and and this is something by the way that that the consumers are willing to pay for, and they will make choices around who they do business with based on um, the kind of experience they have with either a last mile delivery or a curbside pickup, buying online, picking up in the store. Um, that sort of thing. So this is a this is an area um, that people are trying to figure out. I think there's 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 various um, degrees of success with this right now in the market. Um, we can see people that are doing very sophisticated things, uh, leveraging geofencing and things like that for for yeah. curbside pickup, and and others who are you know pretty basic, just saying you know I'm here, That's right. <laughs> kind of thing. Can you bring right. bring my things out to me? Yeah. So um, cer certainly uh, something that we're working hard on and kind of on display back here in the, in the booth, yeah. yeah. And, and Jeff, listen, you know, your, your current campaign slogan, I'm a marketer, you know, uh, see what others can't. Yes. Any, any sort of um, standout moments in terms of, you know, some of your customer engagements where, you know, you've helped, you know, companies see what they can't in this context, whether it's distribution related, whether it's, um, you know, sort of retail locations? Yeah. I, 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 I think the way that I would describe it, I think I'll go back to the beginning. Actually, we've been working with a, a company, Ch Chai Day, which had a sort of a, uh, the folks that sort of relaunched Apple. They had a, a sort of a spin off, a company called Mall for Good that works with tech companies primarily that they see are making a difference in the world. So, so it was a partnership about uh, 18 months ago with a company where we, we, we got together and the challenge was that uh, Esri as a company, I think over the last 50 years, we'd done a very good job of establishing the validity of geography and the science of geography for making business decisions, or GIS. Uh, what we don't think we did a very good job of was really articulating the value of geography at the human level. Uh, I, I think we had always done it internally, but what we wanted to do, the feedback that they gave us was, you needed to talk about the value of location information and how it can be used. And almost it's the missing key in helping us solve some of the most challenging things that we faced, frankly, as a species. Things about climate change. That climate change is a geography. Part, it, geography and location uh, plays a huge part in climate change. It plays a huge part in, in migration of, of people. It, 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 uh, you know, thinking about ocean, ocean pollution, thinking about homelessness, thinking about the things that you read in the paper every day. But what we needed to do and what see what others can't really was tr what, what see what others can't, I think, accomplished is it got people thinking of the value of location information in helping to solve some of those big problems. Like it's there in front of you. You can see what others can't. That's that was the challenge. So. It's, it's had this amazing effect for Esri, but it's also, I think, uh, done a little bit in maybe raising the awareness and the value of, of, of location information. That's honestly been the, the big opportunity. We, we would hear people say, I never knew, if I only knew. If I only knew that maybe part of this, the missing key to the, the missing ingredient to the information that I had was I needed to bring in location and start to think about things spatially in a spatial context, it, it brought more insights. So that, that's, that's been a, good, a big part of it. 
Yeah, and, and listen, one final uh, question. You guys are a great partner of ours. Yes, you know, you're a great sure. partner of a years. lot of companies. Yep. You know, uh, I think recognized you know, broadly in the industries, yep. across multiple industries. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what it takes to be a great partner. <laughs> and yeah, well, I, I, think, uh, I think one, obviously, we, we've been partners for a very long time, 30, 30 plus years. I, th I think the, 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 the three big ingredients are always, it's a trusted relationship. I mean, I think that uh, how we go to market, we, we, you know, we talk about this often, that, that how we go to market in, 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 in talking with the customer, in really addressing the business problems, because frankly, uh, we're in the business to solve customer customer problems. So how do we do that together in a way that leverages the, the strengths of both companies? That's why I always do this funny thing. I say it's, you know, this is just moving air, this is clapping. So our two companies working together, uh, we're, we're clapping in the marketplace. I, I think the, the, the second one, frankly, is, is that it's the pace in which the two technology, the two companies operate, that, that you're in very much the real, the, the real, real time business and how do you capture that information, analyze it. Uh, we have been working for a long time in building what we consider to be the authoritative systems of records for, for geography, frankly, around the world, whether that's government or national government or uh, private or public sector, you know, we sort of help, help build, those, build those systems. So, when we come together as a company and we walk into a customer and, and talk with a, a single voice and we really focus on solving the business problem, frankly, for me, that's where the magic happens. And we've been doing that for a long time. And we're going to continue to do it for a long time. Agreed, yeah. agreed. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, just to wrap up, for those that are looking for more information with regard to certainly that, that customer engagement, I know we've got you know, one of the uh, demonstrations here that talks about that, that audience segmentation and... and yes. uh, and also last mile deliveries. So for anyone that's interested in exploring further, uh, please encourage you. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>